Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to One Heart Church Kids. And today's episode, or today's story, is almost like a rerun to a degree. You know how sometimes when you're watching a, a TV show and they say that, you know, last week this happened, and then they go through an explanation of what was going on last week to kind of bring you up to date and catch you up so that you know what's happening in today's? Well, something similar happens between Acts chapter 10 and Acts chapter 11. And today we're going to find out a little bit of a review. We're going to kind of, uh, if you missed last week's lesson, well, you're going to get a little recap today. So go ahead and turn to um, Acts chapter 11, and we'll get right into it. Now, meanwhile, you probably remember our uh, little setting in two cities last week. Do you remember the names of the cities that we were in? Um, or do you remember the name of the people that were involved? There were two main guys that were involved. One of them was the apostle, the disciple, Peter. This is the same Peter that was with Jesus when Jesus was going around teaching and preaching about God. And he was the same one that denied Jesus. Remember, Peter was the same one that said, oh, I don't know who this is. And then he felt so sorry and he was so sad. But then Jesus eventually restored Peter back and um, he forgave Peter and Peter became sort of the head of the church. I mean, he was one of the main disciples that were teaching people about Jesus. So last week, Peter was in the town of Joppa, right? And Cornelius, he was that Roman centurion, and he lived way up in the north in Caesarea. And remember, there were two visions that happened. First of all, Cornelius, he had a vision from an angel, and the angel said, I want you to go and send for a man named Peter, and he's going to tell you all about God. Because uh, Cornelius, he was, he was a good guy, and he was worshiping God, even though he wasn't a Jew, and he was a Roman. Interesting. Peter, meanwhile, remember he was up on his rooftop and he had that amazing vision of the blanket coming down with all those different kinds of animals on it. And some of those animals were the types of animals that previously the Jews had been told they were unclean to eat. In other words, God's law did not allow them to eat those kinds of animals for, for, for reasons that God had said before. Now, God then showed Peter a vision where God said, eat anything you want. All of these are clean now. You can eat any of them. And while that was true for their food laws, the important thing is that God was communicating to Peter that what I have said is clean, you shall not say is unclean, which means I've declared that all people are clean. So the point of last week's story was to show us that all people are are worthy of hearing the gospel, that the gospel is for all people. And you know the rest of the story. Peter traveled with uh, Cornelius' servants, and they went back up to Caesarea, and Peter was there, and Cornelius had brought in like all of his friends and his family, and they were all, they were like listening to Peter um, describe what was in, well, not what was in God's word, because it all hadn't been written just yet. But Peter told them all about God and what it meant to follow Jesus. So that recaps chapter 10, and that's really what the first part of chapter 11 is about. It is Peter going back to Jerusalem, and he is telling the church leaders in the city of Jerusalem all the things that happened. And he's explaining to them how, hey guys, this is serious stuff. God is welcoming in the Gentiles. And you remember what a Gentile is. A Gentile was just anyone who wasn't Jewish, who wasn't born as a Jew, and who wasn't like following the Jewish laws, the Jewish tradition. So everybody basically in the world that wasn't a Jew, you were a Gentile. So Peter's telling them that the gospel is for the Gentiles too. There are Gentiles, and Peter said he saw the Holy Spirit coming down on the Gentiles. And the people in Jerusalem, they were like, hey, this is great. God has brought salvation to the whole world. This is amazing stuff. So I'm looking in chapter 11, and I'm kind of looking all the way down to like verse 18. And when they heard this, when the people that were there that Peter was talking to, now this is back in Jerusalem, when they heard all this, 
they had no objections and they praised God saying, God has granted the Gentiles repentance unto life. Basically, God has given everlasting life to the Gentiles. They can believe in Jesus as well and believe in the gospel and they can be saved. So these leaders have realized that the gospel is indeed for everyone. And that brings us to our big picture question and answer for this month. What is the gospel? You know the answer. The gospel is the good news that God sent his son, Jesus, into the world to rescue sinners. And this example here shows us that the early Christian leaders were realizing that the gospel truly is for everyone. Well, while all that's going on, we also have to remember that there's been a bunch of other Christians who have moved far away from Jerusalem. Because remember, the Jewish people and some of the other people that are there, they're not liking what they're talking about Jesus. They're not liking this, this teaching. So some of the Christians were even being killed. Remember Stephen and how he was stoned? So ever since the stoning of Stephen, lots of Christians had been leaving the city. They had been going out to other cities to live. And when they went to these new places, they were telling people about Jesus. So for example, um, the people went as far up as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch. And they were telling the message only to the Jewish people though. So they were Jews who were now Christians because they were believing in Jesus. And when they moved away, their natural tendency was to talk with people that they were familiar with. So they were going to the synagogues, the Jewish synagogue, and then they were telling people about what they learned about Jesus. So they were mostly preaching to other Jews and trying to get them to understand who Jesus was and what it meant to be a believer in Jesus. Verse 20, some of the people, however, from Cyprus and Cyrene, they went to Antioch and they began to speak to the Gentiles. And they were telling them the good news about Jesus. And the Lord's hand was with them and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. Up in Antioch, there were a great number of believers and they were believing in Jesus and a big church was being established there in Antioch. News of this spread and the church in Jerusalem they sent a man named Barnabas. They sent Barnabas up to Antioch to find out what was going on and also to encourage those new believers. He was going there to tell them, hey, the people, the believers in Jerusalem, they're behind you. They, they, they want to support you and they want you to know that they're happy what's going on up here. So Barnabas went up there and when he arrived, he saw the evidence of God's grace and he was very glad and he encouraged all those people to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. And it says also that Barnabas was a good man. He was full of the Holy Spirit and full of faith. And, he, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Now, when Barnabas was finishing up in Antioch, he left Antioch and he went to the city of Tarsus, where he was looking for our buddy Paul. You remember Paul. He was the one we talked about a few weeks ago who used to be someone who would arrest Christians and put them in jail. But then one day on his way to the city of Damascus, that blinding light came and made Paul blind for a few days. And Jesus spoke to Paul. And it was Jesus in the light. And Jesus told Paul who he really was. Paul became a believer. Paul became a Christian. And then Paul was like a great evangelist. He was out telling everybody about Jesus. And he was in the city of Tarsus at this time. So Barnabas goes to Tarsus to find Paul, and he brings him back to the city of Antioch. So again, Barnabas is in Antioch, and this time he's with Paul. And the two of them, Barnabas and Paul, they stayed in Antioch for about a year, working, and they were preaching and teaching people about Jesus. And there were many people who became Christians in the city of Antioch. And in fact, the Bible records that in the city of Antioch, that's the very first time that people started using the word Christian to refer to the believers of the way or those people that believed in Jesus. Christian means like little Christ, like look at all these little Christ followers. So that's where the term Christian was first started to be used among, among the believers. What do you think is our main story point for today's lesson? I've got a hint behind me here. Let's see who can get it first. Nab, we. Oui.
to a two hour ever. Nab, what are we, are we gonna nab something? Nab we to a two hour ever. Well, let's try this. Uh, let's turn nab into a, into a barn. I think we know he's going to be part of it. Barnabas, we to a two hour ever. What? What do you think? Barnabas, what happened in today's story? We know it was involving Barnabas. What other, other big thing do we know about it? Um, how about, ooh, this, this A is uppercase. Um, maybe that's a hint. How about, what do you think? Barnabas and... Antioch. Ooh, Barnabas, we to Antioch, our ever. What? Hmm. How about to Antioch? Barnabas. How about Barnabas went to Antioch? What did he do in Antioch? Barnabas went to Antioch. Hmm. Maybe we're missing a word. Barnabas went to Antioch to our ever, forever, ever. What did he do when he was in Antioch? Who did he meet with? Hmm. How about these people? Believer. Maybe he met with more than one. Barnabas went to Antioch to our believers. Did he just go to visit our believers? I guess that could work. But what did he do to those believers? Barnabas went to Antioch to give them courage. How about to encourage believers? Barnabas went to Antioch to encourage believers. Good job. You got the main story point today. And boys and girls, let's finish today's lesson with our memory verse. Yes, when Barnabas was encouraging those new believers, don't you know that they were rejoicing and were glad and happy? And that's like our memory verse today is talking about the Lord being in control, the Lord ruling. And another word for to rule is to reign. And we'll look at the different way that it's spelled. It's not like reign water from the sky, but it's rain. It sounds the same, but it means to rule. So let's check out the memory verse. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. And that's in 1 Chronicles 16.31. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. And until then, may the Lord reign in your life, and may you have much rejoicing and being glad. Take care.